and welcome to Clementine Made Me Do It, a sewing vlog primarily from the north woods of Maine, although lately I have been um, living in the southern Maine because I have been working down here. So right now um, I'm at my parents. This is my sewing space. The light is kind of hard today. Uh, it's pretty overcast and, um, and it was just hard to find space in the rest of the house. So hopefully this will give you a general idea of what things look like. And of course, if there is a fabric that interests you, I can certainly try and figure out the manufacturer, manufacturer, and you can take a look on your computer screen. But last time I left off with a whole host of ideas and plans, and I'm afraid not all of them came to fruition. So on this edition of Clementine Made Me Do It, I'm going to talk a little bit about things I made at, and things that I plan to do for October. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, all of you who have reached out, made comments, um, or emailed me, it's been wonderful to correspond with you um, and receive your feedback on my sewing and making in the North Woods. So let's get started with some things that I finished. I just got off the machine, um, the Mary Ann dress. I had talked about this in my last vlog. Um, I did this view, so um, I have a yoke and then dress uh, and coordinating cups. And I did this out of, I think the leaves are 100% cotton knit and the green is 95 cotton and 5% lycra. So here it is. I'm not sure. How, I'm always peeking. It doesn't matter what podcast I'm doing. Um, now, I had high hopes of modeling uh, these for you, but unfortunately, again, I was going to do it outside because that really is the best light, and um, we are getting some much needed rain. So I will continue to work on my modeling, um, but for the moment, I'm just going to give you a very basic rundown of um, visual of what I was able to put together. So I like the way this fits. It's a shift dress. And I have another one in um, with some really cool Charlie Harper fabric that's got hummingbirds on it um, and a real bright turquoise blue. And then I did a gold yoke. And I just ordered some fabric from Clementine in Rockland of Raccoons to do this dress. So the dress in Raccoons and then a navy yoke, corresponding yoke. I know. The Raccoons were to die for. I can't wait to show them to you. So that was finished. I just have to sew the buttons on. One of the uh, details of this dress is this nice cuff sleeve. And you can see it's split. And then you do buttons um, here. And it's just a nice detail. And I'm going to sew those on this evening. I've been having some trouble hemming and finishing my knits with my sewing machine. It just seems to eat the fabric and make it unhappy. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It looks pretty good there, but it gets kind of like ripply. And I think that's just the tension that the, the stitch is putting on the fabric and the way the feed dogs are working on the machine. So I'm, gonna, I'm thinking from now on I may just finish all my hems by hand and hand stitch everything. Um, I just think it looks neater and adds a little bit of fun detail. I also finished my Renfro dress. Well, semi-finished. Well, so this was a originally a top. It's by Sewaholic. I did view C. So it's this big cowl. I wanted to make it a dress. I didn't like the way that. The bottom had this kind of thick band around it, and I tried it on at, at Clementine. It was so comfortable, um, and I just loved the cowl neck so much that I uh, I decided that I wanted to make it and that I would retro retrofit it into a dress. So here it is. I did it out of this 95 cotton, 5% spandex. It's a knit. Maybe I'll go throw it on so you can see how that neck that neck looks. 
But basically I did a 12 upper, I grayed it out to a 14 um, as I came into the hip, just to provide a little extra ease, and then continued that line just out, and I added a foot to the pattern. So, um, hold on, I'll be right back. So there you go, you can see that gorgeous cozy cowl, and for winter um, in Maine, in the United States, we're just south of Canada, um, we have an extended winter, extended cold season, and so I think that this will be really comfy at school, and um, the whole, and this, the knit itself is really comfortable. I will say it is a little bit snuggy, not a bad snuggy, like it doesn't show off every single roll, but, um, but it's form-fitting. So I'll probably wear this primarily with like boots and maybe a pair of yoga pants underneath just for a really um, comfy but put together outfit. Um, so get a little boot cut yoga pant at the bottom and, you know, most likely boots because it'll be winter. Um, but yeah, so I'm really pleased with how it came out at the top and I'm really psyched how this collar came out. I added the cuffs. Uh, I didn't like the way the cuffs ended up looking. They're another thick band. I put them on and they were like, like, like hanging down. So what I did is I cut the cuff in half and then I just um, overlaid it on the edge and then I hand stitched a uh, cretin stitch all the way around um, for a little Alabama Channon-esque um, look. I haven't done this other side. I plan to do it tonight. You see there's pins. Um, and I'm probably going to do another stitch, um, just something very basic at the top to just to kind of finish that and keep this seam from pulling right here. So, um, yeah, so I finished this dress with the machine, worked out a little bit better than my last escapade with the machine, but um, I really do enjoy the hand stitching, so it's not a slog to consider doing that. Although, if you do want the garment, then um, you have to budget in or plan in um, that time getting stuck. There we go. The only other thing that I finished was um, I was at Clementine and retreat retreating with a couple of friends who are also amazing sewists and um, Leah had these very cool scarves um, with pom-poms at the store. So I literally bought um, my choice of a plaid and it's a flannel and then all I did was serge the edges um, kind of hard with the with the cowl neck but all I did was serge the edges um, on two sides there's one and the other and then I just sewed the pom-poms on and I was done and I love it and I got fabric to do another one it's a turquoise and gold I think with turquoise um, pom-poms so really fun really versatile um, wicked cozy and um, a great staple for any um, winter wardrobe and I have I have a black wool coat which I think this will look fine with I have a lot of knitted items and I love wearing wool and love wearing knitted items but I just couldn't get over these pom-poms and the plaid so I thought that might be fun to spice it up here in the north country you know traditional plaid but then you've got the pom-poms so wicked fun and like probably took me I don't know maybe an hour for both sides and to finish all the edges. I did not finish the selvages. So I have, I just left those as is. Um, so really easy um, with lots of nice detail. So to make this month, well, I'm gonna continue to work on some of the projects I talked about earlier. So I have the Emmeline apron to make, and you can revisit my first vlog to see those fabrics. I have um, 
What else is over there? I have to finish an Ann Carolyn smock. I had a big snafu with my Ann Carolyn smock. I'm doing that out of a Robert Kaufman fabric. It's a chocolate brown. It's 45% linen and 55%, I'm sorry, I'm looking over there to see if it's there, 55% cotton. I don't see it. Um, and the shoulders are raglan and they have a dart and somehow I did not cut that dart properly so one sleeve went inside and matched up um, perfectly on the raglan shaping when I went put the other sleeve in it was all reversed and some I must have somehow cut that dart on the wrong side etc so I've ordered more fabric and I'm going to finish that um, yikes and and hopefully that will be finished in October as well. So Anne Carolyn, October, I'll probably make another Anne Carolyn smock. I've got quite a bit of fabric to play around with um, in that yardage and they are so versatile and so great to wear with jeans, with leggings, with boots, with flats, with whatever. Um, I'm just looking. Nope, I think everything is over there. Oh, I know what I did. Hold on, I'll come back. So, I'm very organized today. It's a Sunday. <laughs> I haven't had lunch yet. Um, so here's, this is the Ann Carolyn. I was so looking forward to wearing this. I'm going to a sheep and wool festival on Thursday and a big sheep and wool festival in Rhinebeck, New York. And I was so looking forward to wearing this, but alas, I will not be wearing it. I might be wearing this though. Depends on the weather. All right, so here's how far I've got, right? So you can see the front smock. This yoke worked. Here's the dart at the top of the sleeve. It's right here. Um, but when I go to put my other sleeve in, on this side, things aren't matching up. So I'll be redoing that. This is really, I guess that's fair. It's, a cho it's more of chocolate, chocolate brown. So that got finished, well no, that got almost finished. Um, I also, I made the Dottie Angel slip, I'm looking for a shift to wear underneath, um, even something like that, but primarily underneath like the Ann Carolyn smock, so you'd have the smock and then you'd probably have another mm, five inches underneath you would see a slip of some um, coordinating fabric, something fun, something poppy. So I tested out this. I literally just made a muslin. It has two bust darts and then these um, faced, uh, or um, what's the word I'm looking for? What's this called? Oh, came and went. Um, anyway, so this could be, <laughs> um, it fits really, really well. It fits so well that it's really hard when I walk to move my legs from side to side. So while I like the way the top fits, the bottom needs more flair, um, which brings me to my next um, make, possible make. So I did do this. I'm not really sure how it's going to work in my wardrobe. Um, I, may, I may be able to amend the bottom to create, instead of being like a true shift coming down, um, to create a little bit more of an A-line shape to it. So I have a little bit more freedom of movement within it. So that did not work out quite as I'd hoped. Uh, I do love this muslin though. Um, so my alternative to that is Ellen Mason is coming out with a new pattern and I was given an advanced copy of it. This is a version of it. Again, I love it. You can do so many different things with the yoke. The yoke can be on the inside. She's got some fun um, additions for doing like a tab or a triangle tab in a coordinating color. Um, there can be a longer yoke, a shorter yoke, so lots of good stuff and she said it's very similar with the Ann Carolyn smock. Um, three different dress lengths, different sleeve lengths. This one has a set-in sleeve, it doesn't have that raglan sleeve. And I'm thinking that this might be a great undershift. So just to do um, the dress without the sleeves and then make it the dress length and do everything else tunic lengths. So anyway, that's a thought. I picked up some shot cotton. 
So I'm going to do the dress in this blue, and I'm going to do the yoke. Now this, I don't think that color representation is quite spot on, but I'm going to do the yoke in this really fun kind of spice, um, spicy orange color. So the dress in that blue and spicy orange, um, this is going to be that yoke section. And then I bought to do as an undershift and um, to do some detailing um, at the pockets. So it does have pockets, as you saw. You can kind of make the pocket out of a uh, coordinating fabric for a little pop. I'm going to do that and the undershift out of this fun fabric. So that blue actually and the orange are actually directly um, related to the colors. So it's not coming out quite as it probably would, but that's the next make. It's This is the Amy Louise shift dress and I'm going to be cutting that out hopefully um, when I get back from Rhinebeck um, and fooling around a little bit more with what that shift could look like, um, what's the perfect sh shift for underneath some of these tunics, um, just so I can play a little bit more with some of my really fun poppy fabrics. Um, I think, I think that might be it. It's a short one this week, and yeah, so... I'm glad I got some things done. I'm looking forward to, as you can see, I have revised my ambitions each month. So really, it's just about finishing some things I've already cut out, the Emmeline tunic, the Emmeline apron, this um, Amy Louise shift dress, and the Anne Carolyn smock, maybe one or two of those. We'll see what happens in November. Um, so I'm sure I will have more fabric to share with you. But in the meantime, I hope that you are enjoying yourself with your making and sewing and knitting or whatever it is, wherever you are in the world. And I look forward to seeing you next time. All right. Take care. Bye.